A final module is disconnecting from the difficult caller. Communication Toolbox, Module 5. In this module, we're going to look at irate difficult callers, tools for irate callers. So obviously, difficult has been escalated to irate. Plan of care, disconnecting the call, being emotionally hijacked, how to maintain a positive emotional state and recovering from a difficult call. Now, telephone triage nursing and the irate caller. Some angry callers talk on the phone as if it is a verbal boxing match. These difficult callers are categorized as irate. So what qualifies a caller as an irate caller? Irate callers are aggressive. They throw insults and profanity. Irate callers are not attempting to communicate amiably. A lot of times they get on the phone this way. It's nothing you've done or said. Sometimes there's nothing that can be done. Okay, so our toolbox for the IRA caller. A serious and polite tone. Use a serious tone. Remain polite. Stand your ground. When an IRA caller is abusing abusively angry, shouting at you, insulting you, or repeatedly using bad language, advise the caller. I apologize, Mrs. Smith, but if you continue to use this kind of language, I will be forced to end this call. Company policy. What's your company policy? Now you need to know this, and you need to let the caller know of your company's policy for handling bad language from callers. I understand your concern, but we cannot tolerate this type of language. Let's back up. How can we make this right? Again, we're still trying. Be clear with your intentions. As a final resort, if a caller won't stop using bad language, shouting or insulting you, it's time to give them their last warning. Lead with an apology to let them know it's part of your company policy and not a personal issue. Be clear that your intentions to end the call, notify your nursing supervisor, and I'm sending a report to the provider. And you're going to say, I am now disconnecting the call. Now we're dealing with call closures. What is the plan of care? You want to let the patient know you understand what their needs are. Even if the nurse cannot accommodate the patient's request, the nurse needs to let the caller know they have been heard. Yes, I understand you're in pain. I understand that you do not want to go back to the emergency room. I understand that the policy is we do not call on narcotics after hours. So the best I can tell you is you're going to need to go to the emergency room. I'm very concerned about your level of pain. And please follow up with the office Monday morning right away. Review the plan of call, care with the caller, with, for the call, with the caller. So this is my plan. Um, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to write all this down. I'm going to send it to the office. Let the caller know you will be sending a report to the conversation of the conversation to the provider and that the provider has access to the audio recording. I will send this report to your provider. Usually most companies at the beginning of each call will, there's a statement you'll say, I have to let you know this call is being recorded to call for quality assurance. Right. So you're going to you, you would have already told them that. Just reiterate it. A lot of times I read callers aren't listening. They're talking. They're talking over you. They're not listening. So just say it again. Disconnecting statement. This is call closure. We're ending this call. So disconnecting statement. The nurse will let the patient know the call is ending. Most triage companies have their own statements they would like the nurse to say, and this will be included in the protocol checklist. The nurse will add a personal statement as well. The goal is an amiable statement. Thank you so much for calling. Take care. I hope you feel better. Oh, so maintaining a positive emotional state when you are on a really tough call. You must protect your mental health. This isn't your only call of the year. This is the one call out of maybe a hundred you're going to take today. So you need to protect your mental health so that you're there for yourself and for the next patient. 
don't mirror the difficult caller's emotion. Don't think, take things personally. Patients will come at you all day with negative emotions that have nothing to do with you and they can make the nurse feel responsible for the caller's emotional state. By taking calls personally, the nurse winds up carrying a lot of somebody else's emotional baggage. This leads to burnout. Being emotionally hijacked by a difficult caller. When a telephone triage nurse experiences a call that is heightened and causes her emulgia to be hijacked, the nurse needs to recognize this and how it is affecting her abilities to communicate with the caller. The nurse must recognize the feelings of panic and aggression, causing an overwhelming feelings to react to the caller instinctually. Remember that upstairs, downstairs and unprofessionally. You don't want to use your downstairs brain when you're talking with an irate caller. So how does this emulgia hijacking happen? The stimuli goes directly to the thalamus and then it goes right into the emulgia before a signal reaches the neurocortex to process. This is a survival mechanism. It lets us react to things before the rational brain has time to mull things over. This is something as a telephone triage nurse, we have to train ourselves to overcome. We can't just let that fight or flight response happen. Being emotionally hijacked by the irate and difficult callers. So the emulgia is emotionally processing, is the emotional processing station. A highly charged emotional call can cause an emulgia hijack. This is because the nurse's cortex shut down and makes it incredibly difficult to think clearly and make rational decisions. You may need to say, I'm going to have to have someone else call you back. The emulgia is the response to the fight or fight, flight, ugh, fight or flight response. When the emulgia is hijacked, the nurse experiences a release of adrenaline. This extra adrenaline leads to an increase in heart rate, blood pressure, and rapid breathing. A nurse will say, oh, I just felt it in my stomach. I started to feel sick. Emotional hijacking or emulgia hijack is when the rational part of the nurse's brain that serves as the emotional processor is taken over by the emotional state of the caller. The difficulty level of the caller alerts the nurse's emulgia. There is a threat. This launches the nurse into a fight or flight response. This primal response is to protect us from danger with quick action, but is not helpful for the telephone triage nurse who must maintain composure and control of the call. All telephone triage nurses will be emotionally hijacked in their career. So you need to recognize and recover our key steps in managing the, the functioning of the emulgia in our brain and preventing the occurrence of emotional hijacking. So train your brain to distinguish between situations that require fight or flight reaction and those that do not. Have a better understanding of what triggers your personal emotional hijacking. Increase your emotional intelligence. Deep breathing. Take a breath. If you feel your heart rate start to go up and your stomach get tight, mute yourself. Take a couple deep breaths. Come back on. Practice mindfulness and being aware of your physical surroundings. A lot of times if someone's screaming at you, if you think, uh, how do my feet feel on the floor? I'm in my own home. I love these PJs. Oh, that smells good. What's for dinner? Let your charge nurse know you need to take a, take a break and step away. Let her know, I just had a tough call. I just had a really irate caller. I need a minute to, to uh, collect myself. Okay, so you've just been emotionally hijacked. You're upset. Recognize that you're upset. You need to recognize your own triggers to diffuse their reaction. During a very difficult call, take emotional preemptive action before your emotions escalate. Mute the caller if you have to. Pause and breathe. Take a pause, a deep breath to calm down and de-escalate your emotions. Take an inventory of your surroundings, letting your brain know you are in no real danger. It's a phone call. They can't hurt you. Write down your emotions. Follow the steps for the irate caller. Let your charge nurse know you need to step, step away and regain your composure, emotional intelligence. Mindfulness, now this is a big buzzword right now, but train your brain to be in the present physical moment and tune into your physical environment. Practice that mindfulness. Feel the floor beneath your feet, look at the ceiling, take a sip of water. Being emotionally hijacked as a telephone triage nurse 
is unavoidable, but there are things we can do to protect ourselves and to recover. Recovering from a difficult goal. Remember, it's not your fault. You've done nothing wrong. And be optimistic. Remember, the difficult callers are temporary and positive responses are permanent. Compartmentalize difficult call setbacks. Every difficult call enables the telephone triage nurse to rise above and gain personal ability. Use healthy self-talk. You did good. Talk to yourself. Oh, that was a tough one. We did good. Oh, thank goodness we didn't lose, uh, lose control. Exercise your sense of humor. Sometimes you need to go on a private message, talk to a coworker about what happened. Follow the protocols for the difficult caller and be confident that you have done your best. Telephone triage nurses have to have the ability to turn lemons into lemonade. Resilience is the ability to bounce back from setbacks and failure. Reframe your thinking and change your perspective by turning your negative thoughts into positive statements. I have dealt with difficult calls before and will use my experience to find solutions to these challenges. In summary, there are tools for handling irate callers and knowing how to recover from an emotional hijacking increases the nurse's feelings of confidence, wellness and job satisfaction.